Many Magic the Gathering players ask the question, is it worth it to buy an Adventures in the Forgotten Realms Commander deck? My, that is a mouthful. And while the answer may at first seem shorter than the product's name, there's a lot of subtle yet very important details you should be aware of. Namely, are these commander decks even close in power and value to the recent heavy hitters of the Strixhaven commander decks, or do they fall more in the realm of the Planeswalker decks like Kaldheim and Commander Legends? With all these D&D mechanics, do these decks still work as ideal entryways for players new to commander? What about players new to magic altogether, and if so, are there many reprints and new designs that established players such as ourselves, will want to pick up. Finally, how fun are these to play? Yeah, you can play with these, right? All those questions and more are what's in store, so let's take a look. An Adventures in the Forgotten Realms Commander deck contains the following. One oversight. oh no, wait, that's not even a card. What, what, wow, that's a lot of packaging. I, a, a little box. That's all we need is this little box. A life wheel counter. Ah, what is this? You got a, you got a strategy insert here. Ugh, so much packaging. A 100 card ready to play pre constructed commander deck. Within that 100 card pre constructed commander deck is 17 new made for commander cards, one thick cardboard foil card of your commander. This is what's replaced the oversized cards. Still not sure how I feel about these and two foil magic cards. Foils appear fairly flat out of the box, so problems of the past, such as we experienced with Kess, do not immediately appear evident. And of course, 10 double-sided tokens, with everything from creature types appropriate to the deck, treasures, and even dungeon layouts included. However, there is no D20. I don't really know that there should be. Maybe instead of the cardboard life wheel. Yeah, that's what they should have done. Average market price is $39.99. Over the last year, Wizards of the Coast has released two different category or types of commander decks. The higher end ones, such as we saw in Strixhaven, which themselves are on par with the power level and overall quality of the yearly commander pre-cons, such as Commander 2016, Commander 2017, and so on. And cost, as these do, $39.99 on average. I mean, they had been $34.99, and before that $29.99, but you get the idea. Last year also saw a new style introduced, which for simplicity's sake I will describe as lower tier, though that's not completely accurate. These were commander decks that in many ways were more akin to being planeswalker decks, or intro packs perhaps, of the commander world, and were offered at a dramatic reduction of price, costing $19.99 on average, with special deals available to get two for $30, and so on. Now, as I demonstrated in my videos, many of those lower tier commander decks were anything but, with some being absolute blowouts in terms of reprints and gameplay. And while yes, the original designs in them were never quite on the level of Dockside Extortionist or Fierce Guardianship, they had some cool and clever new cards to add to the commander database. I was a huge fan and now they're gone. The question is this, since we just had a set of the higher end commander decks in Strixhaven, are these adventures in the Forgotten Realms decks designed in the style of the lower tier or the higher tier? Having looked them over, play tested, and discussed with several sources, I feel very confident to confirm that yes, these decks are indeed the same higher tier level of design as the Strixhaven decks. Yes, the price is the same, $39.99, but more important to note is that these were developed with the same 
same kind of team, treatment, and attention as the Strixhaven decks. The largest contrast is that there are only four instead of five, but Wizards has shifted between offering four and five decks in this lineup before. And I do think it is fair to say that while you can play Commander with three to five, or even, gods forbid, six people, the reality is that four-player Commander pods really are the ideal, and that's a good number to encourage on Watsi's end. But in looking these decks over and in testing them out for the past few weeks, I would say that I don't just think these are on the same level as the Strixhaven Commander decks or even Commander 2019. I think they're superior. Why? First of all, these are possibly some of the best overall mana bases I have ever seen in a Commander Precon. Commander Precons were filled with the worst lands for a Commander deck. Guild Gates, other zero effect or minimal effect tap lands, everything came into play tapped. Slowing down games, needing to be upgraded. And here we have a much preferable replacement that includes the Jumpstart Thriving lands, which I hope are the new bottom of the barrel as far as non-basic lands for Commander Precons are concerned. But these mana bases also have Bounce Lands, the Pre-Lorwyn Filter Lands, the Tango Lands from Battle for Zendikar, the Shadow Lands from Shadows over Innistrad. Oh yeah, I call them Tango Lands and Shadow Lands. I'm the biggest Magic the Gathering YouTuber, so if I call them that long enough, maybe it'll stick. I can be difficult like that. I'm Don Draper. But anyway, these mana bases also have the pre-Odyssey fetch lands, which while not as preferable as them having actual fetch lands in them, still means they come with fetch lands. And you know what? I'll take it. They have fetch lands in them. Kind of. Some of them. Slow fetches. It's fetch lands. Though them also including the Alara panoramas, another cool type of fetch land, technically as well as being filled with commander standards like Bajuka Bog, High Market, and thankful mana base reprints like Desert Double Snap. These are, in my evaluation, possibly the best mana bases of any commander precon. But the mana base is not the only part of these decks that is improved upon, as I think it's quite possibly the best selection of original made-for-commander cards of just about any commander precon. And the reason I say that is that those cards, while really great, are also not better than some of the previous offerings. And that's what makes them better. You heard me. Made for Commander cards are, to say the least, problematic for the format. While this is an area of great debate within the Commander community, I fall firmly in the camp that cards like Dockside Extortionist, Fierce Guardianship, Hull Breacher, Opposition Agent, Arcane Signet, and yes, even cards like Teferi's Protection, all become more or less must-run cards that go in nearly every deck that shares those colors, and thus lead to more homogenous gameplay and and deck building. It also leads to a real feel bad when you feel like, dang, I'm in white, so I guess I gotta buy Teferi's Protection. Can't be in blue without Hull Breacher. Oh goodness, look at the price. All right, I'll buy one. Oh no, it's been banned. Not saying Hull Breacher should not have been banned. I am saying it shouldn't have been made in the first place, but that's another video. But the original cards of these new Commander decks are not universal must-runs. For example, Thorough Investigation is an absolute slam dunk of a card, but it only goes in a very specific type of deck. The majority of white decks don't need to run it, won't feel compelled to run it, shouldn't run it. And outside of the pre-con, it's more of a fun build-around-me design that encourages different types of decks. Yeah, Ride the Avalanche is a nice toy for Simic value engines, but it's far from must-run. Even Rod of Absorption, which some some have said comes close to being a card that most blue decks might want to check out, but even then, that's just check out, not must include like Fierce Guardianship. And it doesn't have anywhere close to the unquestionably high value of cards like Hull Breacher and Teferi's Protection. But uh-oh, does that mean that the financial value of these is pretty low? While we obviously want to look at these decks for their gameplay, which I will in a moment, it is nice to know that we're getting our money's worth, so let's look at the finances. 
If we were to look at the total value of each deck buying all 100 cards individually on the secondary market, and keeping in mind that these values are as of the day of release, we would need to spend $90.69 to put together Aura of Courage, and $86 even to put together Draconic Rage. Dungeons of Death would cost us $77.50, and Planner Portal $74.09. But of course, out of those 100 cards, and out of that money, a lot of it is bulk. Let's cut all the bulk cards at, let's say, 50 cents aside, and then ask how much value is left. So if we're only looking at cards worth 50 cents or more, Planner Portal will have 33 out of its 100 cards worth that, and the total value of those 33 cards is $50.45, still above the average market price of the deck. The most valuable card in the deck is a reprint, Disrupt Decorum, at $7.99 each. Aura of Courage has 39 out of 100 cards worth more than 50 cents each. The total value of these is $78.90, wow. The most valuable card in the deck is a tie between Utopia Sprawl and Sword of the Animist, both reprints themselves, and showing up currently at $7.49 each, and that's quite a drop in value from what these cards were going for before they were reprinted here. Draconic Rage has 30 out of 100 cards, worth more than 50 cents each, and the total value of those cards is $60.13. The most valuable card in the deck is Kindred Summons at $7.60 each, that's a new card. Dungeons of Death has 26 out of 100 cards worth more than 50 cents each. The total value of these is $53.13. Most valuable card in the deck is Phantasmal Image, a reprint at $6.99 each. So, looking over all of these values, what is demonstrated is a more even distribution of value within each deck. In other words, meaning, whereas many previous Commander decks had several high-value chase cards in them, and then a lot of bulk, these decks have a lot of modest value cards. You know, $2, $3, $5, $6, but nothing that's outrageously high, and as a result, a lot less overall bulk. Again, in my evaluation, this is better design, as there isn't this must-have card or must-have deck that is going to be wanted far and above the others, because it's the one with Fierce Guardianship in it, or True Name Nemesis, or any number of examples from the past. Yes, it's true. Aura of Courage has the most value of overall cards in it, but all of these decks make for great gameplay experiences, one that's perfect for players new to the format, or just established ones looking for a spare deck or the pieces and parts for a new one. Gameplay, as always, is subjective. And here I'd like to isolate it from price, so never mind the value of the cards inside each deck. I've gotten in a lot of games with them, both against each other and against other commander decks that are refined. And in my own playtesting and of my own subjective evaluation, I found that Planner Portal was my overall favorite out of the box, and the one I'd recommend to most players just looking for a good time to pick up, as it had a very cohesive and effective reanimation strategy that can get rolling early and never stalled out late game. But Draconic Rage and Or of Courage tie at a very close second. I almost put all three of these at a tie. Obviously, Voltron is a solid strategy, and it's easy for new players to grok. And I really loved Galia's synergy with equipment, and am itching to start throwing in bigger, shinier stuff to this deck. And Gruul is, well, Gruul. It smashes. And it does a darn good job of that, too. But for me, Dungeons of Death was the least enjoyable. It's not that it's a bad deck, per se, but it'd be the first I'd look to upgrade and overhaul. And not out of like, oh boy, I can't wait to do that. More out of, yeah, it needs it. I will acknowledge a personal humdrum with Venture and Dungeons, which are an important part of this commander, so it might be my personal bias showing, and again, I urge you to get the commander deck that interests you most, as the value on all four of these is solid, and especially if Dungeons is your jam, then go Esper. Now, I said that there's no better starting point for someone new to commander than just buying one of these precons, as $39.99 is a hard price point to build a solid commander deck from scratch using, and so spending it here is going to get you a way better value than just putting singles together and having 40 bucks to blow. But there is one glaring exception, one better product than these for the new Commander player, potentially significantly better in terms of value and deal that's out there, and it's worth considering, and that product is other Commander Precons. That's right, there's so many of these at this point that Commander Precons just played themselves. Congratulations. 
Why pay $39.99 for one of these new Commander decks when myriad online sellers and possibly your local game store, where you should check first, have older Commander Precons for $30? $27? <laughs> and no, these aren't those lower tier ones. And no, it isn't just a Curia. But there's a lot of extra decks floating around from many, many of the recent sets, all with prices at or below the selling point of the Forgotten Realms decks. Heck, Given that we're mere weeks, what, a month? Something like that, away from Return to Return to Innistrad, which brings with it its own commander decks. Well, when that happens, it's very possible that these commander decks will no longer be $40 and up, but will instead plummet in price like we have seen all the commander decks from these recent sets do. After all, the Magpie's attention is now at the new shiny release, and suddenly we've got commander decks stacking up from Forgotten Realms. So if you're interested in one of these, but don't want to pay $40 and up, maybe take a slight risk, though I don't think it's much of one, and wait for Innistrad decks to release, and then see how much Forgotten Realms ones are. It might just be a lot less. Final conclusion, between the fantastic mana base, solid selection of reprints, and really interesting yet not must-have new commander cards, Adventures in the Forgotten Realms commander decks are one of the best selection of pre-cons for the format. A new player could absolutely buy any one of these and sit down with friends to play, even if those friends have refined commander decks of their own. Hey, you might not win, but you absolutely can put up a fight, and maybe, just maybe, end up sneaking away with second place. Established players have a lot to love here as well, as the lack of must-have new cards does not mean that the inclusions are not of any interest to a wide swath of decks and strategies. With tools and pieces to add to everything from your existing decks, to new build-around-me strategies and upgrades, or just cool cards to stuff in your trade binder. Overall, while I am disappointed that Wizards of the Coast realized that selling $20 commander decks was not as profitable as selling $40 ones, I cannot deny that Commander Precons continue to be one of the very best pre-constructed products in the game, truly a product for just about everyone, and truly a solid A. Who's ready for Innistrad? What are those commander decks gonna be? Uh, I, I mean, I hope very much this video has been of some help to you. You can help me out a lot just by remembering to subscribe, hitting the like button, leaving a comment, or especially by sharing this video with a friend. Are you going to pick up any one of these commander decks, or perhaps perhaps something else with your $40 instead? Let me know in the comments below. I mean, obviously, Talarian Academy should be unbanned. This is oh, absolutely outrageous. Can this, what is this problem? I don't know. I... But it's the perfect piece for my Urza deck. I will literally fight you right now. At me on Twitter. Guilty.